Yo, Elliot, is marriage and family something that a Christian man should seek after, or is it more of a natural process, something that arrives unexpectedly in terms of finding the right woman? So, the very first thing I'd have you know is that the Bible has something to say about that, yo. And so today, briefly, I'm going to read from the Orthodox Study Bible. We're in 1 Corinthians 7, 7, Bible study with old Uncle E. So, if you look at 1 Corinthians 7, it's about concerning marriage. And he opens the verse by answering a question. So it's almost like St. Paul's playing Yo Elliot 2,000 years ago with the Corinthians. And he says, now concerning the things of which you wrote me. So obviously somebody was asking Yo Paul, hey, is it better to get married or to be a monk? And he goes on to say, it's good for a man not to touch a woman. <gasps> is that what the Bible says? Yeah. It's better that you not touch a woman. Nevertheless, he goes on, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife and each woman have her own husband. And so he's basically suggesting that it is better that you remain chaste, remain free from engagement with women, particularly if you're not married. But if you are lusting and burning for lust, that then go ahead and get married. He kind of puts it as like a side point. And you know this is true because if you go on to chapter 7, verse 7, he says, For I wish that all men were even as myself. And so he was a celibate man. He remained chaste his whole life. He may have died without ever having sex. And he's suggesting that it's better for men not to touch a woman, but if you need to touch a woman, to marry. He says, but each one has his own gift from God, one in this matter and in, and other have other man, matters of gifts. And so this is kind of like a tough thing, right? Like I've been married for 20 years and I'm reading from St. Paul here in Corinthians and he's suggesting uh, that there are two ways that a man can live. Really, there's no in between. There's no gray area. You're, if you're going to be a righteous man, you're going to be a monk or you're going to be married. He doesn't say be a promiscuous puss popper, uh, dipping your pudding, dipping your spoon and pudding all around your neighborhood. No, he's saying you can choose monk or you could choose marriage, but there's no diff there's no space for anything else in between. And so you know your question is, is it good for a man, a Christian man? to spend his life looking for a woman. And if you would ask Paul, he'd say no. And he goes on for a number of reasons. He says that, you know, it is good for a man to remain as he is. He says, are you bound to a wife? Then don't seek to be loosed. Are you loose from a wife? Then don't seek a wife. It's basically suggesting, hey, Elliot, you're married. It's good. Stay married. Hey, Bob, you're not married. Stay unmarried. He says, but even if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if you and if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. So he's almost once again like sort of suggesting that marriage is the lesser of the two ways. He's suggesting that it is better that you just remain. Now, I'm not giving you my opinion here. I'm just telling you what he says. In fact, I try to understand this through the lens of those who are smarter than me and St. John Chrysostom, who was a third century bishop wrote extensively on marriage and family and he pulls a whole lot from Corinthians and Ephesians and he goes on to say on his homily on 1 Corinthians 7 he suggests that is as if Paul was saying if you are searching for the best and most lofty path then do not take a woman at all but if you want help and security in your weakness look for a wife so even St. John Chrysostom, the, 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 the Bishop of Antioch, uh, suggests that you're being a weakling if you're searching for a woman. Wow, wow. That's kind of like a little bit mind-blowing and sort of a shock to my ego, but I understand. He goes on, he says, because St. Paul go, goes on and says in Corinthians, he says, so we're at uh, chapter 7, 32. He says, because I want you to be without care. He says, time is short. So that from now on, even those who have wives should be as though they had none. Those who weep as though they did not weep. Those who rejoice as if they did not rejoice. Those who buy as though they did not have possessions. But basically, he's saying, I want you to be without care. 
He who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord. He now may please the Lord, but he who is married cares about the things of the world. He may please his wife. There is a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares about things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in the body and in spirit. But she who is married cares about things of the world, how she may please her husband. And so, he, and then he says, and so I say for you, for your own profit, not that I may put a leash on you, but for what is proper and that you should, that you may serve the Lord without distraction. So what Paul is suggesting is that in order to fulfill your obligation to love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, that it is better to be free from things that distract you as they're related to the world. And that's why he's saying that if you're unmarried, it is better to remain unmarried. But being married is not a sin. And in fact, if you're anything like me, you're so weak that you want a wife. And that's probably why you're asking me that question. So the first thing I would just kind of like propose, at least as an ego shock or maybe a, a bit of humility, is that uh, I'm so weak that I need a wife. <laughs> right? That's that's what the Bible's saying. I'm not giving you my opinion. It's not your Elliot's opinion right now. I'm literally leading, I'm reading scripture here, and I'm only giving you based off of men that are much, much smarter than me, their interpretation of it. I don't believe in private interpretation of the Bible because it's a very mystical book, uh, and I can't figure it out myself. So that's why I look to the saints. Uh, and even St. John Chrysostom goes on to say that, like, you're a weakling if you burn for passion. But Paul says that it's better that you marry than to burn with passion because it helps you avoid sin. Now, I know that's not really asking, answering your question, right? You're asking me, should I go seek a wife, which Paul is saying that's the weak thing to do, or should I allow a woman to come to me? Um, I don't think either of those are going to fit you in your state of life, but I could be wrong and I don't know you. So should you go seeking after a wife? I don't think so, but I'm going to give you some suggestions on what you might want to do. And do you want to just kind of sit back and wait for a wife to show up for you? No, I don't think you're going to want to go about do, going about it that way either, because, uh, you know, if you like wait for, you know, they say what the cat drags in, <laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of guys, a lot of, you know, religious guys, spiritual guys, spiritual people, they allow like the cat to drag them stuff and they say, oh, well, I guess this is what God wants for me. And I'm not so sure just because it shows up at your door doesn't mean that that's what God wants for you. But a lot of people, because they feel that putting effort in is trying to save themselves and that everything should just come by the hand of the Lord, uh, they just accept whatever shows up to them. And, you know, that is a way of life. There are many desert stories of desert fathers and monks of the and, and guys in the monasteries in the early church that they just accepted anything that God placed on their lap. Uh, even if it was like at the hands of you know evil people, they would just say, okay, fine. You know, they were in complete submission. Uh, I'm not totally sure that that's required uh, or, or practical for today's men if you're not choosing the life of monk. And so I don't think you're choosing the life of being a monk. So I got some suggestions for you. First of all, someone, uh, the author of this book sent me this book probably about 10 years ago. And I don't know why. But I do know why, because there's a lot of guys that ask me these types of questions, and I refer them to this book, The Christian's Pre Preparation to be Single Long Term. Very good book uh, based on scripture and his reflections on, well, let me just read the back of the book. Problems related to this mat matter are an e epidemic in the body of Christ. I can say confidently that at least half, if not significantly more, of the Christians whom I have seen fall away from the Lord have done so with fear of an un or an unwillingness to be single long term as a significant notable factor in their falling away. This is tragic, yet such casualties of faith do not need to happen. And so a lot of guys will turn away because, you know, they go and fornicate. Uh, they go and, you know, try to live worldly lives because they seek and desire a woman weak. <laughs> And he's saying that, that's, that there's a significant, he says it's an epidemic of men that fall away as a result. Men and women. He wrote this book for men and women that fall away. The author's name is uh, Aaron, Aaron Carey. And I think you, I think, I don't want to like step on his toes, but I think you can get the book for free online. I think a couple of my students looked it up when I was doing a class on marriage. 
and they found a PDF. I think you can find a PDF online. If you do find a PDF online, send the guy a, a email saying thank you if you find his email or something. Uh, I don't think I have it here. So this was actually printed in 2020, so it's not as old as I thought it was. But anyway, the point is that there's hope for you. There are answers for you. There's a lot of guys out there that are struggling with you and they have information for you. And I think you should read this book. And finally, I would say that, listen, if you're being called to the vocation of marriage, which I'm, I'm very confident I've been called to the vocation of marriage, kind of joking before by calling it weak. Uh, it is a significant vocation in the life of the, the body of Christ because we need souls to magnify the presence of the Lord and to and to worship the Lord. Like family is good. Hang on, my dog's walking away. Fool your M. Let's go. Leave that. Let's go. Um, but my next suggestion for you is prayer, brother. And I know a lot of times, like, we kind of say, all you could do is pray, right? And it's one of these things where it's kind of like a cop-out. It's like, oh, that's the last thing we want to do. Like, you know, if, you, if nothing else works, if Tinder don't work for you to find a good Christian girl, <laughs> then just pray. But I would say make that your primary activity. Primary activity is to formulate a proper prayer and repeat it often, often, in gratitude for the spouse that the Lord is bringing to you, if it be his will, right? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord, if it be your will, bring a spouse into my life that would help me glorify you. Allow us to be partners in our path of becoming saints with you in heaven. If she is out there, help her seek me as I am seeking her. And through the Holy Spirit, bring the love that you have for your son between this woman and me so that it is a magnet that attracts us and brings us together to glorify you and make lots of babies. Amen. So a prayer like that. Make a prayer like that. I like formulaic prayers, meaning Father Ripperger says that prayer begets what it says. So don't just rip off the top of your head, hoping that God's going to understand what you're saying. It's cool, but you want to make it logical for you. And so say specifically what you want and ask the Lord for it. Knock and you shall receive. And I think you'll get it, dude. By the way, I love marriage. I love family. And I think you will too. And I hope it works out for you. Done. Porn. 68% of church going men watch it secretly, hiding this vice from their wife. For other men, it's alcohol or drug use. Are you willing to risk your marriage, family, and finances for sinful pleasures and vice? Are you ready to fight back? If you're a married Christian businessman or entrepreneur caught in the clutches of drinking, drugs, or jerking off. Realize that every moment spent in these vices is literally destroying your life. Is this the man God called you to be? To live like this? If you're ready to go to war against vice and take back your life, and here's my advice. Click the link in this video or visit waronvice.com to book a call with me to see if we're a good fit for going into battle together. I'll see you on the inside.